The next comic section we're going to learn about is circles. Um, and I don't know why, but my brain went to this place. So have you ever seen um, Madagascar, the movie, has um, the animals that were from the New York Zoo that got on a bus, and or not a bus, um, a ship, and they were sent to um, another place to live, and they ended up in Madagascar, which is why it's called Madagascar. Um, but, of course, the lion was used to eating meat, and now he's surrounded by his friends, um, and he's looking for something that he can eat, and the penguins end up making him fish, and they say, the kitty loved the fishy. Um, so I was thinking circles, and the kids love the circles. Um, everyone loves circles. So circles is probably um, everyone's favorite comic section um, because they're easy to understand. Um, they're easy to move around and to do things with. So. Here we go, circles. So our objectives, we're going to answer the question, how can you identify if an equation is a circle by simply observing its equation? And then we're going to write the equation of a circle that includes the center and the radius, and we're going to graph circles on a coordinate grid. So uh, some vocabulary you should know. A circle is a set of all points in a plane that are a distance r from the given point the center of the circle. That distance from the center to any point on the circle is... Uh, or that R is called the radius of the circle. And hopefully you've learned that before now. Um, we can use the distance formula, which um, this is all underneath the square root. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. If you um, subtract those, square them, add them both together, and then square root that, that will give you the distance from one point to another point. Um, and that applies for finding the distance from... Um, a point on the circle to the radius of the circle, in case you need to know that. So the standard format of an, of an equation with a circle with center h, k, and radius r is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And we've seen h and k a lot this year. Um, that stands for the variable that's associated with the center or the vertex or like that um, one super important point that you should know about um, a curve. So here's a picture of a circle if you've never seen one. Ooh, ah. So let's write an equation of a circle. So here we're given the center and a radius. So if we use our formula x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, this point right here, the center, is our hk. So this represents our h value and our k value. So it's x minus a negative 4, so it becomes x plus 4 squared plus, and then this y stays a minus 3 squared, and our radius is 4, and we square 4, and 4 squared is 16. So this is your equation of a circle with center at negative 4, 3, and the radius of 4. Pretty simple. Um, if you took geometry last year, you should have seen this before. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and try this one really quick before I do. Okay, so for this one you should have gotten x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 64. So whatever these values are that are inside, this one's always associated with x, this one's always associated with the y, we change their signs and we always square the radius. All right, if we're going to translate, if we have um, this circle, it's um, at x squared, y squared equals 9. And we're going to move it four units left. So right now its center is on the axis, axes. We're going to move it left four units. We're going to move it up three units. So what is our new point for our center? Negative 4, 3. So we're going to take and plug that in for our h value and our k value. Do we change our radius at all? No, so it's still going to stay the same. So it should be x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 9. Alright, uh, so there's a couple more that you can do for practice, but they're all basically the same thing. 
Okay, so let's um, look at this problem. Suppose that um, you are creating a circular irrigation field that has a center at 450, 500, and a radius of 400 feet. Which one of these equations models um, what you're um, trying to accomplish? So, real quick, we're just going to um, do a sketch. Um, I've said this a lot of times, but I will say it again. Um, doing sketches for this chapter is going to be very beneficial to you. Like, don't be afraid to write some stuff down. All right, so here we have a center at 450, 500. Our radius is 400 feet. So I'm going to be over here, um, over here, up here, and then off where you can't see. Um, well, then if I kind of connect those right here. So this is 450. 500, what? Hopefully I can use numbers. Okay, so both of these are gonna become minuses. So minus, minus, so that one's good. That one's not. Minus, minus, that one's good. That one's not. Okay, now we need to see um, our radius is 400. In order to find for our equation, we have to square it. Instead of 400, it's 1600. So A is your correct answer. All right, um, finding the center and the radius. Um, here I'm giving you an equation. I want you to work backwards now. So tell me what the center and the radius are. Well, to find my center, I look at my h and k values. I change the signs. So now it's 16, negative 9. And to find my radius, I need to take the square root of whatever this is because this is r squared. So to solve for r, we take the square root. Square root of 144 is 12. So at center at 16, negative 9, with a radius of 12. Oop. Okay, for this one, this is where you have to put a little bit of brain power in. Um, so for this one, we want to complete the square. Because right now, so for this one, what we need to do is we need to group together our x's and then group together our y's. So x squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 10y equals 8. All right, now we need to be able to get it into this form, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. But what we don't have are perfect squared trinomials. So what we need to do is we need to create them, and we do that by completing the square. Hopefully you remember doing that. So we're going to use this handy dandy little formula, b over 2 quantity squared. So we're going to take our b value, the one in front of the x, 8 over 2 squared, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So what we need to do is we need to add 16 onto our x values. But what we do to that one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side of the equation. So we're going to add 16 here, but we're also going to add 16 here so our equation remains balanced. Okay, we need to do the same thing again um, with our y values. So I'm going to do negative 10 divided by 2 squared, which is negative 5 squared, which is 25. So I'm going to take and I'm going to add 25 here. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm going to add 25 here. So now when I rewrite these, what I have is x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals, and then I add all these together. Um, let's see, that's 11, 49. Okay, now I can factor this. What multiplies to be 16 and adds to be 8? 4 and 4. So that's x plus 4 quantity squared. What multiplies to be 25 adds to be negative 10? Well, that's obviously y minus 5 squared, and then that equals 49. Now, in order to solve this, or find our center and our radius, we just look for our center, and we look at our radius. So our center is at the point negative 4, 5, and our radius is 7. So there you go, completing the square. All right, I've got a couple more of these. Um, so really quickly for this one, find our center. 
it's at negative 8, negative 3, and our radius is 11. And then I have one of more of these completing the square ones. So we're going to put our x squared together, our x squared and our x. And I know I'm going to add some value here, plus y squared plus 14y, plus I'm going to add some value here, equals 8. Okay, now I need to complete the square. So I do 6 divided by 2, which is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 here. I'm also going to add 9 on this side. Uh, for my other one, I take 14 divided by 2, that's 7, and 7 squared is 49. So I'm going to add 49 here, and I'm going to add 49 here. So now I'm going to rewrite these. Um, this becomes x minus 3 squared. This becomes y plus 7 squared. And then if you add 8 and 9 and 49 together, I believe you get 66. Okay, that equals 66. So what is our center of our circle? 3, negative 7. And then define the radius. Remember, 66 is our radius squared. So we have to take the square root of 66. Is square root of 66 reducible? No, it's not. So we're just going to leave it like this. All right. And that concludes our lesson about circles, except for graphing. Um, so just really super quick. Um, for graphing, all you need is your center, negative 1, 3, and your radius, which is 5. Get on the coordinate grid, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, make a circle. Now our radius is 5, so that means up, down, left, right, all directions, we go 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one's down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one is right here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one is up here. Take and connect those with a smooth curve. Eh, my circle skills need a little bit of help. Um, but that should create a circle with radius of 5 in all directions. Okay, now we're done. Okay, I hope you have a great night and you really enjoyed our lesson on circles.